Hello, 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 it's Jesse Ecker and today's video is amazing because it's something that I struggled with personally and so many of my students who come to us when they first come to us struggle with as well. And this is about time management, it's about burnout, it's about having to sacrifice your whole freaking life for business that's not getting you the results that you want, that's not giving you the time and freedom that you want and is just taking over your whole life. Uh, with you know, you feel very busy, but the results you're getting is you know not what you really want. If that sounds familiar, and this is something that you're going through, you're going to love this video. So today I am going to talk about uh, three parts to what I believe is most important to be very productive and efficient through your week. And so the story that comes with this is my own personal story. So. Um, I like to say that I am, and I got this from one of our challenges, a historic procrastinator, meaning that I used to procrastinate all the time. But when it really comes down to it, if I don't have this system that I'm gonna share with you in place, I procrastinate because I procrastinate because I freeze up when I need to think and do at the same time. Um, when I have to think about what I'm doing and then execute, I start to procrastinate and I start to look at all the different options that I can do and then I usually pick the easiest one. So the system that I created for myself was to help me get through procrastination and just start to get more effective with our um, results that we were getting, more effective with our planning we were doing and to get more repeatable and consistent, consistent results on an ongoing basis. So over the last eight years, I've really worked on myself for productivity. And let me tell you, it's been a grind. I've, I've bought all the softwares, I've done all the courses, I've done all the journals and all that stuff. And for me, my personality, some of it works, some of it doesn't, uh, but I've kind of combined the simplest, most effective way for myself, and now my students are loving it as well. So let's just think of it like this. There are three things that you should have in place for your week. The first thing is planning, the second thing is doing, and the third thing is reflecting. If you can manage to put all three of these things in place for your week, you're gonna have a successful week. Let's just keep it super simple. Planning, doing, reflecting, okay? So what, what does that even mean? Like how does, that, how does that even work? Well, the first thing that I wanna make sure that I kind of mentioned before is that it's really important to separate what I call thinking time and doing time. And that's maybe counterintuitive for some people, but it is so important for someone like myself, and I believe for almost everyone that you separate the two. Why? Because thinking takes a lot of energy, and same with doing. So when you have to combine them together, it takes an enormous amount of effort and energy, more than you think. And what ends up happening is you start to question what you're doing and maybe doubt. And um, you know you don't get to be as effective as you want. So one of the great things about thinking time is that you've put yourself in a special mode for thinking, which means that you are logically now thinking about what I want to accomplish in either the 90 days or week ahead, okay? So I'll talk about that in a second. But if you can actually put yourself into that mode, instead of showing up for your day and it's like, okay, what do I need to do? Like, how am I gonna do this? And then start to execute it. Because that second part, that second way of doing it is more an emotional way. It's more of a reactive way. And we all know that if we're making decisions based off reactions, our decisions are not as strong as when we make a decision based off a response that we've thought through. True, true. So we need to separate thinking time and doing time. So what do you do during thinking time? Great question, right? Well, the first thing that you wanna do during thinking time is you wanna make sure that you're planning at least 90 days out. So we do this on a quarterly basis in our company. Uh, we do 90 day uh, goals. And uh, the reason why we've switched from year goals to 90 day goals is because I think year goals just suck. Um, I think you can have a year vision of like what you want, but to have like a year goal of like, these are the res this is the this is what we're doing this year is just kind of boxing you in in a specific way that is going to um, you know make it super hard to achieve because like how are you supposed to adjust and like you know you're committed to these goals but now it's like a whole year and it's 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 
it gets very challenging to achieve those goals. So what we've done is we've we've broken them down to 90 days. And the reason is, is like you can sprint for 90 days and you can make adjustments. You got four of those, right? You got four 90 days in a year. So you can make those adjustments as you're going. So we do 90 day um, goals and we call them 90 day results because we want to have a result by the end of 90 days. And there are three ways to look at results because most people are like, I'm like, hey, what do you want to achieve in the next 90 days? And they're like, well, I want to make more money. I want to work less. I want to um, travel, you know? And it's like, cool. But what does that even mean? Like travel, like, can I go down the road? And does that mean I'm traveling? Can I make five extra dollars? And does that mean I'm making more money? Can I work, you know, 30 minutes less for the week? Does that mean I'm working less? Am I hitting my goals? So when I'm talking about 90 day results, there's three different ways that you look at it to say, yes, I did it or no, I did not do it. Okay. So the first one is a percentage. I want to increase the amount of leads I'm getting by 10%. Um, I want to earn 10% more revenue in the next 90 days. Uh, I want to increase the percentage, uh, you know, uh, like decrease the percentage of 20% that I work throughout the week. Whatever it is, percentages is an easy way to say, yes, I did it or no, I didn't. Second one, number two, numerical, right? A thousand new leads, 5,000 new dollars of active income or revenue or profit. Um, something with a, a, a numerical thing, a thousand people in my tribe, a thousand new people on my list, whatever it is, I keep going to a thousand. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's easy as I'm making this video. Uh, but you know, using a numerical, right? Numerical thing, working 25 hours per week, right? That is numerical. You can say, yes, I did it or no, I did not do it. So percentages, numerical. And then the third one is just project based. I want to complete this specific project. I want to write my book. I want to launch this product. I want to start a coaching program, whatever it is, that's project based. So those are the three things that we do on a 90 day basis. We say, what are the, what are the 90 day results we want? So that's the first thinking that you do. And this video is coming out right before quarter number three. Oh, great timing. Wow. Great timing. Right? Uh, so this is coming out before quarter number three. And so, uh, I would at least encourage you to give this a good shot to say quarter number three, what are my 90 day results? So that is the first thinking that I do. Then the, the next thinking I do is on a week by week basis. So what I'm doing on a week by week basis, I'm looking at these 90 day results and I'm saying, what can I do to start moving closer to achieving these 90 day results? This is how you work on the right stuff throughout the week. This is how you prioritize the, the parts of your business that are going to give you the best results possible. If you've ever felt like, damn, I'm doing so much during the week, but I'm not seeing the results I want. It's because you're stuck trying to do it all instead of the most important things that are actually going to move you forward. You're spending way too much time on things that actually don't really matter towards your 90 day goals. So if you can do your weekly planning where you're planning actually your week out that has specific actions and tasks, this is specific actions and tasks throughout your week that are going to move you forward in your 90 day goals you are going to achieve them. You're going to progress farther. You are going to smash them, right? You're going to actually get closer to your goals. You're going to feel more accomplished every day. Cause you're like, wow, I'm moving closer. I'm getting closer to that 90 day result that I want. I'm getting really close to finishing that project. I'm getting really close to that, you know, seeing the numerical data come in, right? So the thinking time of planning your week and the way that I do it, and many of you probably have seen this is I block my week out. Now I do it very intensely because I'm very used to doing it. Most people, they should just maybe do two hours a day, two hours a day times five days is 10 hours of doing the right stuff. That's better than zero hours. And that's going to get you into the habit of blocking, right? So that is the thinking. So those are the two things that I like to think about 90 day results and the uh, weekly planning. And this has been a complete game changer for me. So those are the two thinking things. Now let's go to the doing part. So the doing part is like showing up for your, um, for your task and you're just doing it right. 
So one of the hardest things uh, for most people is committing to actually doing it when you say you're going to do it. I know, how crazy is that? It's, it's so challenging where it's like, oh, well, something's coming up or, you know, this person wants to talk to me or, you know, uh, there's something else more important that came up, right? So what I would say for the doing is, you know, the, the best part about showing up is you don't have to think about it. So you just go and do it. But for someone who's just starting to do this, one of the things that I help at least with the mindset level is to picture yourself going on, uh, let's say a date with like the most important person in your life. Like maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your parents, maybe it's a celebrity that you've had the biggest crush on ever, or you would never want to miss out or an influencer or someone, a role model for you. And you have this date with them. It could be romantic or it could not, whatever. It could be like a dinner date and you have a date set out for them. Would you be late for that date? Would you put something else a priority over that specific date? Would you take an email or a call over going to that date? The answer is hell to the no. No way, there's no chance you would ever do that. So it's important to get into the mindset to start to build the habits of doing what you say you're going to do. As you continue to build those habits, you start to become more confident because you are more focused and you are um, more, you're, you're more focused into what you're doing. Um, so uh, that is where you are starting to build your confidence, right? So the more that you, let's just say, show up every single week, the more you build that muscle of doing what you say you're going to do. Super awesome. And I know that if you commit to that and, and look at that as like a new perception of like, this is the most important meeting, uh, then you will not miss your blocks. And again, if you're too much missing your blocks, it just means that you've overcommitted with your planning. So tone it down, make it easy for yourself, set yourself up to win small actions at first, build yourself up, and then you can start to go more intense, like um, more blocking. Okay. So that is the doing part. Then you go to the, the reflecting part, right? So it's really important to reflect because there is this principle called correct and continue from that I learned from my dad, T. Harvecker. It is my number one favorite principle that I follow from him. He's got so many, but this is the one that I use too much, like on a consistent basis. Correct and continue, correct and continue, correct and continue. You cannot correct if you don't reflect. Let me say that one more time. You cannot correct if you don't reflect. You have to be able to reflect on something to make some sort of corrections. We make a correction on, hey, this is working, let's keep doing it, or let's do it more. Hey, this is not working, let's make an adjustment, let's make an improvement so that we can make a correction for next time. If we continue to do a correct and continue, we will be successful. My dad says, correct, your, correct and continue your way to success and never give up. And I believe that if you wanna be successful and you want to get a certain result, the only reason you wouldn't get the result is because you're not correcting and continuing and it's because you gave up. So if you're saying, oh, I tried everything, well, then you must not have reflected because if you've tried everything, you've tried it a million times of correcting and continue, there's no way that you could have not get the result for yourself. It's all about correcting and continuing. It's all about, first of all, learning, doing, correcting and continuing, right? We learn something, we do it, we correct it and we continue it, okay? So if you can follow that model, learn, do, correct, continue, Continue, uh, you will be successful. And then of course, never give up. So that is the model for being a better time manager, a model for being more productive, a model for being more efficient, and a model for really learning what's working and what's not. It's also a model for getting the right stuff done every single week. So what did you learn from this video? What did you get the most from it? What are you gonna take from it? comment below. Let me know. Uh, I would love to hear from you and start a conversation. Thanks so much for watching this video. Remember, there's only three things you need for being a super productive, amazing human being. It's planning, doing, and reflecting. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your attention. And I really, most importantly, appreciate your commitment to learning and growing. Bye for now.
Was that video awesome or is that video awesome? Hey, my name is Jesse Ecker, Managing Director for Harvecker International. And if you want videos like this on a recurring basis, every single week on business, financial tips, life tips, strategies, principles, things to make your life a level 10, then go ahead, click the subscribe button below this video and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on the notifications as well. So every time we send a video, you're the first one to get it. Thank you for watching this video today and subscribe to our channel.